Here we have an oversized metal ball that I couldn't even grab. Now we take it and carefully plant it into the cylinder. Hey there, fellows. Now, I just want to say... So I saw this picture recently. It looks nice. Now, the writing indicates that a metal ball found some way into the cylinder and made a bunch of <laughs> nice round craters on the piston crown. Now, we'd like to do something similar. Make some of our own that'd be just as round and smooth. Right here, we've got an entire set assembled of stuff to insert into the cylinders to inflict that same sort of damage. We've got some larger balls, some screws and bolts, and some ceramic spark plug debris. Now that I can definitely tell you, this bit right here, this actually can break off from a spark plug, make it into the cylinder and it can wreak havoc inside there. Like, the consequences can be very bad. Now, we know that after each subject, be it the small ball, bolt, ceramic bit or whatever, removing the head to examine the piston would be quite a hassle, wouldn't it? And to avoid that, we've got this device. Now, this is an endoscope. Okay, where is a convenient place to start? On a rear drive lot. Um. You know, I think cylinder number two is just begging for us to remove a plug and put something in there. There is nothing hard about this. We remove that, see what's up, and start the loading process. Fellas, I'd just like to say thank you for your support and for your kind words. I'm well now and everything is good. Now you yourselves take care and make sure to take all of the necessary precautions given the situation we're in. Now the latest addition to our online shop are these lovely face masks that'll help keep you safe from all sorts of nasty infections. Now at the moment it's August and the rainy autumn season is right around the corner, meaning it's time to buy some warm clothing. We're offering you guys these fantastic hoodies from our shop. And as of recently, we've also got these awesome vests for sale. On top of that, we've got a bunch of other stuff and we're always adding something new to the product line. For example, not too long ago, we began to offer these nifty lighters and air fresheners. So go ahead and give our online shop a visit. Get yourself some G54 merch. And when using the code from the video description, you can buy some stuff at a good discount. Putting metal ball inside combustion chamber to see what happens. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Okay, the camera is on, let's insert it. Turn it slightly. Okay, there's the piston. How is it feeling? Looks like a normal piston to me. There are some deposits, but that's totally normal. Though there is a pretty big gap between it and the cylinder wall. Beautiful. Overall, the piston seems to be fine. Nothing horrifying to report. I do see a tiny bit of oil. But whatever, that's not a problem. Our main task is to make a few marks. I do see a scratch. Must be from when I stuck a screwdriver in there. Okay, while there is no plug, let's load a ball in there. Then we screw the plug back in, start the motor, apply throttle. Without too much enthusiasm, though. Then we remove the plug again and see if there are any marks on the piston. Let's do this. Here we have an oversized metal ball that I couldn't even grab. Now we take it and carefully plant it into the cylinder. Okay, it's in. Now we take the plug, screw it in, tighten it down. The moment of truth, let her rip. Let's listen. I hear some semblance of knocking. It's intermittent, though. I don't hear any constant knocking. More balls? Small ones? Yeah, let's put an entire handful in there. I think that balls of this size... They can easily find their way out through the exhaust port. I don't hear any more knocking. 
shut it off, and something tells me, no, it's convulsing, that the ball exited the cylinder. Let's remove the plug and have a look. It looks like the spark plug was hit. Right here. And now... Okay, there's the piston head. What else do we see? The valve. And that is a really wide opening. That ball might not... have... any trouble whatsoever exiting. Okay, those are the marks left by the ball. Wow, look at that! Looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Where's the ball itself, though? Yeah, really, where is it? Ball, here, boy! Look at how many times it hit the piston. That? No, that's not the ball. But it definitely left a bunch of craters. Let me try closing in on them. I mean, really, where is the ball? The marks are plentiful, though. It's shiny because the camera has got a really bright light on it. You want a racket? What do you mean? Try finding the ball. Yeah, but how do you want to do that? It looks like the surface of the moon. It is covered in craters, man. The whole thing. I don't see it anywhere. Oh, look, there it is. Well, it looks like it to me. There is one thing we can do to make sure. We can stick a magnet in there. And use it to poke around. Now, someone suggested we insert multiple balls instead of just the one. That one we found on top of the piston. Let's put another one in. Okay, now we've got two. Let's grab another one. Place it inside. So that's three. Four. Five. We've only got seven. Let's throw them all in there. Hopefully the engine doesn't seize prematurely. And I still have a sneaking suspicion that they might be able to exit through the exhaust ports with how small they are. Okay, that's seven. Let's carry on. And once we're done, we remove the head and see how many of them are left. The knocking has gotten weird now. They are hitting the plug. Oh, here we go. Really? Seven balls is all it took to kill you? Must have been a fluke. Yeah, it's a lot of thing. Yeah, I guess we can have a look. The piston has to be completely shiny now. They probably cleaned off all of the deposits. It's like a ball polishing effect. Removing all sorts of grot. Yeah, let's have a look. Shut her off. Looks like they were hitting the spark plug. Okay, that's not normal. You've got them tiny white marks. Let's have a look. Okay, there's the piston. Planet Piston after having been bombarded by a multitude of meteors. Oh, it is so beat up. There is one of the meteorites. Yo! Where are the rest? Do you see any more of them? Two? Next to each other. And one more stuck in the oil. Where'd all that oil come from? I think I see another one. Or even a couple, for that matter. Yeah, those appear to be balls. That also looks like one. Yeah, the whole thing is shiny, so it's a bit hard to tell. But we get the picture. Now we shut this down and continue. Okay, let's seal cylinder number two. The balls are in there. The engine works even with them inside. Now the plug is removed from cylinder number three, for which we've prepared these here screws, which are pretty tiny. Well, I mean, the head is about the same size as one of them balls, though it is 
considerably longer. Whatever, let's just stick it in. Into cylinder number three. Let's try this out. Let her rip. Okay, you can shut it off. The tiny bolt created one hell of a racket. We decided to switch it off at that point, without even trying to rev it up or add anything. They're small, but they do seem to pack a punch. They can do some damage. And so while the engine still works, I think we should remove another plug and toss the ceramic debris in, as if it broke off from the spark plug. We take our tweezers and load up the ceramic bit. And another one, right in there. Okay, one more. Don't try to run away. There we go. Sweet. Ceramic, balls, screws, let's go. I really hope you can hear this. The engine is barely even alive at this point. Switch it off. Before it decides to quit for good. We do want to evaluate the consequences of all of this. See what all of that crap did to the cylinder. Okay, so the engine works for now. Now we take some larger 6 mm balls. Oh, I've got a ball in my cylinder, what am I gonna do now? So the first ball is in there. We grab another one. And place it inside. Now it's in cylinder 4. And a third one. Yeah, I think we've got enough of them in there now. And with that I've got the spark plug. Time to install it. Let's do this. That didn't last long. I guess we have to turn it back now. I take it that everything in there is rooted. Is it gonna turn? Yes, it is. That's good. We've turned it back a bit. Let's go. It appears that the engine won't turn over with such big balls inside. And so now I'm gonna remove the plug and try to get them out. There's the piston. One ball. Two ball. Three ball. What's that tiny thing? It's a small ball. Where did that come from? Didn't we put it in there? No, we didn't. If it got in through the exhaust... Well, I mean, it is possible. This can't be the ball we put into cylinder 2. Okay, so using a magnet, we did remove two of the balls. Honestly, I don't understand what it was touching, since for obvious reasons we couldn't see what was going on inside. But the ball itself... It has this mark on it, which tells us... It might have come into contact with the valve. How's the catch? Nothing biting? There's still one left in there, right? Looks like a minnow. Oh, wow. How could this even be real? Yeah, it actually turned out to be a ball after all. Will you look at that? It's from cylinder 2? But this is cylinder 4. Oh, I got so many thoughts racing through my brain. You would have seen us load seven tiny balls into cylinder number two. And how did this get into cylinder four? Judging by the color, it's been there for a while. It's all a big mystery. How did this tiny ball even make it into cylinder four from two? You need to blow, otherwise miracle won't happen. And that's number three. Why do we take them all out? Well, even if just one is left in there... Well, the piston... It'll lodge into the ball at top dead center, with the ball pushing into the cylinder head. And the piston might crack, or something else might. I mean, we saw that the engine wasn't rotating. Now we put the spark plug back in. On cylinder number four. 
I'm still puzzled as to how that tiny ball made it into cylinder 4. All right, let's start it with the ceramic bits and the tiny balls and the screws. The big balls didn't do it for us. They seized the engine. Let's try starting it. Something seems to be very wrong. Interesting. It's impossible to tell which cylinder is making the sound. It's resonating all over the block. The noise it's making is very loud. And high-pitched. You want to hit the gas? Haven't we been here before? Well, okay, knock yourself out. Don't tell me the engine is seized. Okay, now it definitely is. <laughs> okay, so look here. We've removed the cylinder head. We'll leave it here for now. Let's examine the content of the engine block. See what happened to all of that stuff. Something miraculous has happened in there. Cylinder number one, which we put the ceramic debris into. I can't even really describe what I see in there. I see a bunch of crumbs. I haven't determined what they're from yet, like metal shavings. I'm gonna try removing whatever sticks to the magnet. And what do we see? Bits of the rings, which are straightened out for some reason. And flattened out. This looks like a piece of the upper piston ring. Look at how slender it is. Yeah, they have been pulverized. So apparently, the ceramic debris that was in there it was ground down, found its way between the piston and the cylinder wall. And this is the end result of that. It is pretty gnarly. It's as if somebody scratched the walls up with a rake. Like big time. Goodbye, this cylinder is dead. Now let's see how the head is faring. I do see marks. They appear to be from the ceramic. Let me just brush this off. Look at how it cut up the aluminum. It's covered in craters, wow. Man, this took a merciless beating. The ceramic debris is hard. And before it completely crumbled, it did some serious damage. Ah, uh, take a look at that. It's a good thing I'm able to wipe this off. This is some doom and gloom. Man, this sort of damage requires resurfacing the entire cylinder head. Okay, so that's cylinder one with the ceramic. Now let's look at the second one, where we had seven balls. You know what's curious? Is that after removing the head, there is not a single one in there. <laughs> Apparently they found their way out through the exhaust valves. I mean, turning a ball like that into powder can't be easy. In any case, some kind of... There are bits of something in there. What does it look like to you? It's not attracted to the magnet, meaning that's aluminum. How did this find its way inside the cylinder? I don't know what to tell you. Because on the head... This is all I can see. We expected to find that on the piston. So many craters, man. Those were some tiny-ass balls. Look at how they beat this up. And there are just so many of them. Pretty much impossible to even count. Cylinder number three is the one with screws, yeah? 
What's curious is that now we don't see any of them in there. So they've evacuated. Here we see pretty much the same picture as in cylinder two. We'll end in cylinder number one for that matter. The head has sustained severe damage. So first look at the wide casting and then at that narrow bit. As for the piston that I have yet to wipe down, Okay, wiping it and giving it a closer look. Same story. Now the piston is located right across from the head, and so there are going to be less craters next to the narrow bit, and more next to the wide casting. Okay, now let's look at cylinder number four. That's the one where we had the big balls. Or, I guess you could say, nuts that we imitated with them big balls. Okay, so here's what happened in here. Now, remember the first time the engine seized? The first couple of times. So look, three balls were resting on the piston. And it looks like they hit the head simultaneously. They sort of even look like factory markings. Now, I'm just starting to clean this with a rag. Notice how clean it is already? As if somebody has washed it beforehand. The valves are beat up, but you can barely even notice it. Next to the intake valve, you can see that something slammed into the head with quite a bit of force. Those are some nasty marks. Okay, now with the head removed, let's look inside the cylinder. The piston's missing. I don't even see any pieces of it. It would seem as if... Then again, no, I'd say that all of that most definitely found its way inside the sump, where it's currently residing. The cylinder wall is broken even. There's a gaping hole in there. Also, from the looks of it, while the engine was rotating and there were still some bits of piston left sticking to the rod, well, the cylinder was filled with coolant. And look how clean this became. I'm telling you, this wasn't cleaned off by anybody. So we removed the head, and upon examining everything, we noticed that it looked suspiciously clean. Looks like the coolant gave it a quick rinse. That's why it's so clean. It also crushed the spark plug on the way out. I mean, it's hard to tell how that happened exactly, whether it was actually the bits of piston that came charging at it. We did bring the revs up, stuff was flying around, so this very well might have been caused by pieces of the piston. Where does this leave us then? Well, I'd say it's like when we loaded seven tiny balls into cylinder number two, when we looked inside cylinder number four and found one of those tiny balls. As for how it got in there, well, I have my own theory how that might have happened. But I'm curious to see what you guys think of the matter. Let us know your thoughts in the comments, fellas. As for my slightly crazy theory, well, through the exhaust? I mean, on some cars you would have a situation when the catalytic converter starts disintegrating, with the dust blowing back into the cylinders. That scratches the walls and so on. But I mean, take a closer look at this lot of manifold. Cylinders 2 and 3 have their channel with the merge inside the collector pipe being quite far down. Meanwhile, 1 and 4 also have a channel, with the collector pipe being far down in this case as well. And so for the ball to make it from 2 to 4, it had to go all the way down there, to the merge point, then it had to be sucked back into here to find its way into cylinder 4. No matter how light it is, my assumption is that now, nah, man, that is just impossible. No way that's gonna happen. But then there is also the intake side of things. The distributor and the carburetor are a bit maladjusted on this motor. And when the engine coughs, it can cough into the intake just as well as into the exhaust. Something tells me that it was in that moment when the engine was backfiring while the intake valve wasn't yet closed all the way. Yeah, that's when it could have run for it, I think. I don't really see any other options. Anyway, that's my opinion. It could have gone into the intake manifold, and then, well, navigated its way through there somehow, and got into cylinder number four. I don't see any other reasonable explanation. If you do, please share by all means. I'm genuinely curious to read what you guys think.
Well, and that's where we are with this test. Okay, fellas, this experiment has 107% been a success. No matter what sort of object makes it into the cylinders, it's life-threatening to the engine. You really need to be paying attention when you're replacing spark plugs. It'd be a good idea to blow some air into the wells before you pull them out. To remove any dust and other debris, keep it from getting into the combustion chamber, and ultimately to ensure your engine a long and happy life. And that's all I have for you, fellas. You saw it all for yourselves. What happens when something gets into the motor? It's as good as totaled. So keep an eye on these things. And that's all I got for you. Watch us, subscribe, suggestions, comments, give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later.